Hey, it is Greg Milby, Kentucky's Heartland and Kentucky's Heartland.com on the road today. And I know it seems a little dark, kind of like we're having a romantic interview. Josh Basham was with, was with me. Uh, Red Hill Cutlery in Radcliffe is, uh, I, I got to tell you, if you have not been to this place yet, it is a phenomenal place. I've been in here a few times, but walking in today, I, I don't know, it just, there's just something about it. It's, it's like one of those hidden treasures. You know, when you think of Wizard of Oz and you think about the wizard, Nobody sees a wizard and you pull the curtain back, you're like, oh, this that's is kind of like how, the... That's kind of like how Dad is. <laughs> <laughs> He's so the wizard. It's the wizard of knives. Uh, and I, what I love the fact is, um, just to give you guys at home a little bit of a history here, Red Hill Cutlery created in 2004, but it wasn't too long before that that you guys even got into the knife business. About late 90s. All right. So... You've been doing lumber and hardware for how many years? 55, 56 years, since, 60, since 1963. So how does somebody that's focused on hardware and lumber get into the knife business? It's just like any kind of small business. You try to get from another, from one point to another. Mm -hmm. Try to have something impulse buy at the counter. And then when the impulse buy was a 12 knife display, then it goes from a 12 knife display to a 48 knife display. Then it goes to a room. Then it goes to your, when we remodel the whole drywall building. This is where we store, store drywall out for the hardware side. Mm -hmm. And then we had to remodel the whole thing and make hmm. it into a knife store. And, and I love the fact how it started was your grandpa didn't, didn't really want to put knives in here no. at all. Not right. at all. Papa was a very, very conservative man to say it the nicest way. <laughs> but yeah, he didn't want it. He, he, turned, he would run the case salesman off every time he came in. He didn't hmm. want anything to do with it. But, uh, and then years later, he actually got to meet that case salesman as a, hmm. as a case legend. Uh, Shine Jessup and he goes, man, you imagine him? My fat boy going, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, didn't, he didn't really want to talk about that. Happy, He's like, well, look at yeah. this weather. We don't want to talk about yeah. that. So uh, your dad put a case of six case six knives, knives yeah. and they were gone like almost immediately. Within a couple of weeks and he couldn't get over how fast they moved. And you know, back, and that was in the late 90s, it was $300 or $400 probably cost us for a display. It's a lot of money in the night, a lot of money now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and Dad was Dad's pretty conservative. But the good thing about my dad is he can see he sees light in the tunnel when no one else can. Hmm. So he kind of saw like it was, a, and he's collected knives all his life. So he might have bought that display for his personal collection, just after. in case. He's just like, to, you know what? If we don't sell it's these, a I'll just win, take them. Yeah, if it doesn't, yeah. if I don't sell the store, I'll keep it for myself. But yeah. it sold, and it kept growing and growing and growing. It just never stopped. Yeah. So I, I. Uh, my dad collects a, has a few knives, and my grandpa and papa used to have some knives back in the day. But, you know, I didn't realize how big the knife business is. I mean, it is, it's, it's massive. Because, you know, I think, you know, you get a knife and you whittle it. And you whittle with it, do a little bit of other things. But, I mean, there are knives here. I mean, these are huge collectible and collector items nowadays. And people travel. I mean, we have people come to Radcliffe just for knives, which is kind of even crazy to even say it. Mm -hmm. But we have people come from to Radcliffe from, we've had probably just about all 50 states come in our store. Hmm. Uh, some foreign countries, which I mean, they didn't come just for the store, but they came and they saw that they look at knife stores when they're in town. Kind of like, a, you know, they look at different stores, like my brother is big into sneakers and stuff. He looks at shoe stores when he goes into different towns. Mm -hmm. There's knife collectors that are just, it's just massive how big it is. You hmm. don't really, even the people in Radcliffe that helped us get to where we are, they didn't realize how big it was till they came to our shows. And they saw four or five hundred people at a knife show just for a knife show, and you know we used to have them. We have them lined up around the corner of the building, hmm. which is pretty impressive. It's like a it's like a movie release almost of the, how it works. It's, yeah, for something that started with one little case and has grown from there. And what we're standing at today is actually a museum portion right. of, of the building. And I know uh, there's some some work going on around here, but uh, and it, that's why it has that dark feel to it, but. It really is an interactive museum, and there is a ton of history in here. A lot of history. He's got stuff that even when Case comes down to, for our shows and stuff, he's got stuff that Casey walks through. I've never seen one of those in person. Hmm. Uh, one of the founders of Case had a dairy farm. I know it sounds weird, but he had a dairy farm up in northern Pennsylvania. He had a, uh, on his milk jugs, he even put the double X's. They are incredibly hard to find because it's a glass milk jar. Dad's got three of them, or two of them now. And the case people came, he, when he finds something he likes, he mm -hmm. just goes after it and tries to find them. That's why he has this big knife box collection mm -hmm. of all these different knife boxes. Because everybody throws the boxes away. Everybody throws the boxes away. And some of these are from you know, two, three hundred years old. Oh, I mean, really? He's got some wild stuff that he's collected through the years. And he gets, he'll go through a, a phase to where he kind of buys some stuff. 
and he kind of gets burned out because he gets what he wants. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're, that's the biggest question we ask, how do you get all this stuff? Well, he searches for it pretty good, but we got a lot of people can bring come to the store every day that bring in knife collections. Hmm. Uh, kind of like Pawn Stars or something. They come in the door with, a, with you know, sometimes it's 10 knives, sometimes it's, we've had a guy from Indiana come down with 3,000 knives that we had, we looked at one day. We had old humpback trunks. And you just sit there and just look at them. Now, is he looking them. to sell those things to you guys? He keeps or? and sells. He mm-hmm. keeps them. And, yeah, the guy the guy will end mm-hmm. up trying to sell either all or some. Mm-hmm. But then when it goes down to it, you know, dad will go through the collection and he'll keep some for himself. Keep some of it. He has a drawer in his safe for each one of the grandkids. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, But uh, a lot of it goes in the museum. Some of it does and some of it goes back out for sale. But it's, it's, it's wild to know that some of this stuff has come from... See, our, it, so our base is out of we're not even that local people don't a lot of local people don't know about us but we have a really good website mm-hmm. and it goes out to everybody we, we're more well known on the internet than mm-hmm. we are local so you sell a lot of stuff online right way. Okay. she does 20 30 packages a day at night so they go out the door huh and what i think it's crazy you're attached to the hardware store but you say people come over here and they don't even realize that this is have even over here i mean 55 years lumber company has been we still have people come back and go, oh my God, you know, they're trying to find the bathroom or something. They walk into this and, because it kind of goes through a hallway from the hardware store mm-hmm. and it just opens up to all the, dad's got signs that were uh, from Fountain Ferry Park. He likes a lot of local history stuff. Mm-hmm. He's got stuff from uh, old signs that used to hang on the old lumber company when we started in 63. He's got a lot of neat stuff. And and I notice when you walk in <clears throat> to Red Hill Cutlery too, um, and you have to come by and visit this. We or I'm showing you some photos here and there, but uh, it, it just doesn't do it justice. So that's why we picked one spot because we want you. Because really, it's an experience. When you walk in, uh, you need to experience the entire thing. But each area of the knife store itself has a different feel and mm-hmm. has you know whether it be a, a storefront or a bank or something like that. What where was that? Where did that idea come from? He wanted to make it look like an old western town is what dad's goal was even there's a by the cash register's old brick building it's re uh, recycled brick it's old antique brick hmm. there's a grinding stone that they used to sharpen knives sitting in the front of it that's actually in the brick uh we actually had more buildings but as we grew we almost had to take them out and remodel hmm. them and we grow to the new building but uh which is going to be sad because we're going to lose all of this hmm. i've always, i've said for years it's a, it's a shame we have this i think it's a pretty nice store but then you go down to it and we have a bigger online business that no one even knows you have a, a retail store. But you know, I think that's that's the draw of Kentucky's Heartland. We have a lot of folks that come for Fort Knox, mm-hmm. whether it be uh, uh, you know to visit Fort Knox or they've got kids at uh, Cadet Summer Training or they're at the sports park or wherever they are in our area uh, visiting. They want to get out and, and kind of venture out. And I think Kentucky's Heartland is, is about not just reaching those people, but also reaching the people that live locally that don't even know this is here. I've mentioned to a couple of people about the knife that, that I was able to get my dad, and we'll talk about in a little bit. Right. Um, and they, they're, they're not familiar with Red Hill Cutlery. But um, I think if they come here, it is, it is truly one of these uh, community treasures that we talk about that uh, really is a, a, really in the knife world is a, is a, a true tourist destination. It is, yeah, and it's contagious. Mm-hmm. When you get in, even if you don't carry a knife or you collect knives, a lot of people get into it. Then they get into it for their kids. Because mm-hmm. you know, kids buy stuff that is thrown away the next day. Mm-hmm. Knives are something they can pass down. That's what dad's always like too. Knives are something you can buy and pass down mm-hmm. to the next generation. And yeah. they always go up in value. Like when he buys knife collections, it's neat to look through and see the knife collection grow from, oh, he's got a lot of knives from the 70s or from 74. Oh, he must have had a really good year that year at the factory or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's kind of neat to see their history too when you look at the stuff. Yeah. Now, do people collect specific types of knives? I know growing up, I didn't... I, I just thought it was called a case knife. I didn't realize yeah. that it was like a Xerox, you know? Hey, can you go make me a Xerox, you know? or uh, I just thought case knife was what you called it, but it's actually a brand. Or is that the niche? Is everybody kind of finds the thing they like? Well, you, know, you got we got stuff for like people collect brands mm-hmm. and they collect patterns like a toothpick or a stockman or a trapper. Uh, police buy knives, they collect them, but they use every one of them they use. They put it in their pocket. That's the ones that actually save lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, military, buy, you know, different. Everybody's got their own niche with it, but we try to sell a pretty good variety of all of them mm-hmm. to be able to have. But. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the and, and that gives me a chance to talk about this. Uh, there have been a few moments in my life that I've been able to make my dad cry. 
Okay, probably more than. But actually, the the great moments are when uh, when a woman actually decided to marry me. That made him cry. Tears of in joy. A, in the joy, yeah, in a good way, because he didn't <laughs> think that would ever happen. I think. Uh, also, with the birth of his grandkids, uh, and when I gave him a knife that was made of the floor of the barracks, the World War II barracks of Fort Knox, because my grandfather' basic training was at Fort Knox. So that was very symbolic to him and i know you guys were very instrumental in making that all happen how did the fort knox knives happen we had a auction basham lumber had an auction of odd doors and hardware and stuff and we had a public auction i was out there talking to mike weaver mm -hmm. and he was trying to figure out i'd heard through the grapevine he was trying to find ways to to make up uh oh uh raise money for the for the project mm-hmm and we tried, we donated a lot of stuff to it from the hardware side. Well, I told him, I said, why don't you send the knives, or the wood, and we can make some pocket knives out of it. And if you think it was sell, I said, it's worth a shot. We can do 25 sales. He sold 25 before he even got them in. They were pre-sold. Then we sent the wood down and had it treated. And uh, that was the neatest, till to this day, the neatest project we've ever been a part of. The, to hear the stories that they came in. And we still have some. I mean, he's going into different editions, and now that he's he's fully retired from mayor and mm -hmm. everything else, I mean, he's got God, the hell mm -hmm. he keeps it straight. But he's uh, he's going to make some more. Uh, he's going to get back involved and in trying to get that barracks open full time. Mm -hmm. But the stories when you heard people, I learned more about Fort Knox from the people that served here. And then you'd have guys that came in, go, "There's black on that, mm -hmm. on the knife." Because that, that was actually the floorboards. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, you think of the old wood floorboards. It had gunk from the boots and stuff. From mm -hmm. World War, it was used for World War II, Vietnam, and Korea War. Those were used. Hmm. So, I mean, it had gunk. I said, that's just in the wood. And then they thought, that was, they thought it was a default or something wrong with the knife yeah. until they, you actually told them. But it was neater than it. Uh, it's so neat to have that. Yeah, because each knife is totally different. It's, it's like a fingerprint. Every yeah. knife is completely different. The wood's yeah. always going to take it. The natural materials are always going to take it different. Mm -hmm. But uh, the story is really neat. And it helped raise a lot of money for for the uh, for the barracks. Like I, I told you before, mm -hmm. that's going to be one of those things I can point to with my kids when they, I helped that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and Mike's been great to us through the years. He was a contractor at the lumber company. It's just knew him. We've known him forever. I've known him since I was a kid. Yeah, so the, that, that knife there is definitely uh, one of those. And, and I'm sure you have hundreds of other knives that have historical, symbolic, um, feel to them uh just like what you're talking about the ones that the case guy has not even seen but you guys you know when you go from 2004 when you decide to, to step out and open a knife shop and open a, a store uh now you're you're looking at opening a large museum that's well, a big step from 2004 to 2019 and it's scary i'll tell you that as a as a as a still as a kid long way from six knives in a case well and you know this grew and grew and grew and, and me and my brother and my dad and my mom have all been a part of it but mm -hmm. it's it's scary we've talked for years about finding a better location because we've always had the online we've always had the phone business but we've never had the walk-in that we wanted and then this opportunity, so it's been it's been one of those things that oh we're gonna move to a big location one day, one mm -hmm. day it's gonna happen, and then one day is, is here. And I'm 34 yeah. years old, and I've I've seen it grow from when I was in high school. It's scary. It's the first time we'll be actually separated off from the hardware side because the hardware and lumber will stay here, and we'll mm -hmm. be out there by ourselves. And it's yeah. uh, it's doubling in, the museum in here will double in size, the store the actual showcases and everything it'll double in size. So we're going yeah. up to a big space. So how many how many products do you offer right now? Do you even have any idea? We usually we we always say we have about ten thousand knives in stock, on hand. But that's mm -hmm. counting the museum too. Mm -hmm. But uh, we carry about twenty five different knife brands. We carry safes. We carry anything that has to do with the knife. If it cuts, we carry it. Mm -hmm. We try to at least. We have stuff from Italy. We have stuff made in America. We have some of the import items, Germany. I mean, we have. We deal with a lot hmm. of a wide base of customers. So that will continue to expand there. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about this world's. What's what's this world thing that we've been featured on lately? The world's largest case knife. So all right, so. We're going to have the world's largest case knife right here in Kentucky's Heartland. It'll be in Radcliffe. It'll be visible. You can see it from 313 and Dixie Highway. It's uh, going to be 21 and a half foot long. Mm -hmm. uh, not many people know the size stuff because we just now finalized a lot of it. 
the case actually helped. They sent us the blueprints of the of a Barlow, the old, one of their old patterns. Mm -hmm. They actually blew up the pattern par parts or uh, blueprints for it, so we actually know how to make the knife. Hmm. We send that off. Uh, Modern Welding, uh, Glenn's Auto Body and Vine Grove. We do everything community. We're small business, so we're getting all these local places to help. It's going to be over. I think he said uh, over six thousand pounds. Is that knife's going to be? So I won't be putting that one in my pocket no, and carrying no, no. it off. And we're got, <laughs> and we're we're not saying Guinness yet. We're not saying the G word yet. Right. But because we got to see. But it will be able to open and close mm -hmm. at least once. If Guinness wants to come, we're going to invite. We're so gonna, that I guess that's the that's the goal. I mean, the goal is it well. But as Dad says, that's the goal. But if Guinness goes, it's not the largest. We can still go. We got the biggest knife in Kentucky. Yeah, there you go. But the biggest <laughs> knife on. 313. <laughs> it's going to sit right on next to, right next to the property. Mm -hmm. It's going to be real pretty right next to Boundary Oak. And we're going to work with Brent on a lot of stuff, which he has got on the Bourbon Trail, which yeah. is huge for this area. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I never thought would happen to Radcliffe. No. Uh, and, and, and that's that's the growth that we've got going on here. I, I think it's 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 really, really cool. And I also think, Scott, uh, you and I were talking a little bit before, and I think people need to hear about this too, that you know, uh, Gallapalooza is always really big in Louisville where they do the, the horses and they paint them up. And we, we actually have a few of those in Hardin County. And I know, uh, I think we mentioned that Nashville does guitars, mm -hmm. but we're gonna have knives we're, in our area. It's in the very, very, very beginning stages. And we're looking for people, we're trying to do Radcliffe, but we're, it's looking like we're gonna expand, we don't mm -hmm. know yet. Uh, it started out with 10 five foot Barlows that we're gonna come in fiberglass to be outside. And we were gonna do about 10 of them and do like city hall and tourism and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna actually sell them to local businesses. And in the end, they're gonna be a, a trail. We haven't named it yet. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is literally within the first two months of- The sharpest trail in town. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna patent that, aren't you? I will but, in a second, yes. But yeah, it's 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 one of those things we, you know, Radcliffe, never had a, once Fort Knox left some mm -hmm. we still rely on the base but we have great tourism we're right at, you know 10 minutes off of 65 we're in great tourism spot with the bourbon is going to help we're going to do bourbon and blades when we get out with Brent hmm. we've already talked about that he's going to do some real he's got some real neat ideas we're going to work with him on uh, we already do bourbon barrel knives made out of the staves hmm. but uh, the knife thing we're actually going to do a tour we're going to actually go to the, each one take a picture with it collectors are going to go nuts over it uh, there, the companies or businesses can actually buy them. They'll actually get them painted with, you know, if it's a porter paint, they can have stripes on it. If it's a, a, a car dealership, they can put cars or whatever. They can get them painted however they want to, and they'll actually be on the trail. Uh, right. They will actually be able to sell the knives. We're going to try to make knives look like theirs and actually make, get them made so they actually sell the knives. So at the end, you have a big set of actual the regular size pocket knives. Really? But you can actually go take pictures. You know, you can tag it on social media, on Instagram, Facebook. You can post in your pictures with it. Uh, it's going to be really neat. I don't know what it's going to be called. It's not going to be Gallapalooza, or, but I think you know Gallapalooza in Nashville. We're going to have. Mm -hmm. It's kind of be. It's neat to hear Radcliffe in Hardin County in the same breath as yeah. Nashville and and Louisville and Pittsburgh and all these and fake places that do them. Sometimes you have to put yourself uh, if. To, to really get the idea of what something is, put yourself in somebody's uh, mindset. For me, you know, I love, uh, you know, what whatever somebody's love is, think about that wherever you go for that. Baseball, you go to Cooperstown, mm -hmm. you know, right. and, uh, you know, you got the NFL Hall of Fame, those places, that's where people gravitate for those uh, items. This is going to be the place of people that love knives are going to, going to gravitate to is Radcliffe, Kentucky. And that's the neat thing. It's not going to be just Red Hill Cutler. It's mm -hmm. going to be Radcliffe. It's mm -hmm. not going to be, we're going to come in as a knife place or, you know, we want them to come in our door, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's going to be more of them coming to the town, spending the night because they can't fit everything in in a day. Yeah. Uh, you know, they That's great. They go we're going to be like the Branson of pocket knives. We're going to be the Branson of pocket knives. There you go, man. We're going to have a, a you know, they, they, can come, they can come to the bourbon trail, they can come to the knife trail. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a whole thing. That's, I, I think that's amazing. And, and, and I, what, what I love the most about it is it's a family business. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that over, it is, you know, it's grown all these years. It, it, it started innocently enough as, as somebody that said, probably just went, you know what, I've got counter space. Um, 
this guy's been bugging me for the longest time. Let's put six nines we'll in here and see where it goes. See how it goes, yeah. And it's grown from there now to where where we are standing. And I know the lighting is a little different, but it to, to me it gives me this whole feel of what we're talking about. And hopefully you'll come out and see it here at Red Hill Cutlery. Uh, the museum is is fabulous, and I know there's some work being done, which I think this story people are is is pretty cool too. That that Case is sending a couple of experts up, and they're not gonna be here for an hour or two hours or, or even a day. They're gonna be here for a week and a half. Hopefully, yeah, we're trying to get, see when we open the new store, which is fingers crossed, into this year, hopefully fall, we have a knife show September 28th, and we have another one September 20, or October 26th. Mm -hmm. We're hoping by the first show we'll have it, this, the new store open. Hopefully the, even the big knife will be out there. But the museum will not be open. Mm -hmm. we're, as we're not we're we're gonna try mm -hmm. but we're trying to be you know realistic but the museum because we're when we we're not just moving all the artifacts to the new museum we're actually getting case is going to send their old historian that was the historian for many years that's a good friend of ours and the new their new historian they're going to send down for about a week to help us document everything hmm. that's why now we're actually going through jason's going through the museum piece by piece which is a it's a pretty good sized museum now but it's gonna take some time Mm -hmm. But he's going through the museum piece by piece, and they're going to work with us and work with him to try to get everything going. And, and document, and maybe even have some history behind each one of the knives know, and we tell have some stories. Little, yeah, we have a little bit of history. They're going to help us document more history. So when we get mm -hmm. out there, it's going to be more precise, and it's going to be a, a better... We want, we want the experience to be better, right. is what we want to Because, be. you know, these knives really are a part of Kentucky history. Mm -hmm. And in this area here, because uh, some of my fondest memories are are sitting out on the front porch at my pappy's house, watching him whittle with an old case knife. And at that time, you know, you think it, it's a case knife. I remember it had a yellow handle on it. And uh, I didn't know that, you know, they actually have names. There, there are different models. I mean, you, th you, you don't think about that kind of stuff, but um, you, there, there actually is history behind each one of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's history. And I mean, even like, uh, you know, the the historical figures, especially Kentucky, you know, Lincoln carried a knife. He had a he had a six blade Congress in his pocket mm -hmm. when he was assassinated. It's in the Library of Congress now on display. His six blade mm -hmm. Congress is. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that. I mean, it, it's a it's it really is historical. There's knives in here that have one uh, have a looks like a razor blade, but has a hook on you hook on your pocket. And they were very very popular. They were created during the Civil War when there's so many amputees. Hmm. They could open it with one hand instead of having because they didn't, they lost a, a limb. So hmm. They could open it with one arm. I mean, there's a lot of history into some of the patterns and the, and the way things work. And how, how the function is. You know, how I mean, the they've designed that to their. I mean, that's that's somebody's job. Mm -hmm. They develop knife technology. That's it's pretty wild. Yeah. So you got to come out and check it out. Red Hill Cutlery in Radcliffe. Uh, they're on Facebook. You see that information there. They're also on Instagram. Uh, that information is also available for you, and you're on uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you on MySpace? No, we're not on MySpace. No. Not anymore. Man. Are you still on there? Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> Do you carry a pocket knife? Huh? Do you carry a pocket knife? No, I do need to carry a pocket you'll, knife. You'll I have need... one before you leave. I Look promise at that. you that. Yeah. I'm going to get the Fisher Price of pocket yeah, knives right here. Because with training wheels on it. Right. <laughs> it's a little plastic one all, all <laughs> blunt and everything. There you go. So come by. Check it out. Red Hill Cutlery. Give everybody the address. 1628 North Logston Parkway in Radcliffe, Kentucky. We're on the same road as North Harden High School. So if, if you if you want to do the scenic route, you can you can uh, take 313 and do the the, uh, the new uh, bypass area, and you can come that way, and you just ride off of that there. I, that's how I cheated today. I just that's the easiest way to go. Yeah, I was afraid to drive too close to JJ DeBall's office. I didn't hey, want to go by that. there. Anyway, so come by and check it out. They uh, they've got some amazing stuff here. You know, Father's Day is just around the corner. And again, this is not a sales pitch. He didn't tell me to say any of this stuff, but really and truly, <laughs> thanks. They, they have a little bit of anything and everything as well here. Uh, so come check it out. Red Hill Cutlery in Radcliffe. Uh, one of our small business spotlights, but also it is not just a small business spotlight, but it is people that are powering the heartland. It is it is what we want to see in the future as these things grow and, and highlight what we got going on here. Josh Basham with, uh, with Red Hill Cutlery. It's Greg Milby with Kentucky's Heartland. Thank you for watching.